Charting Toward Intimacy covers mature topics. Listener discretion is advised. Charting Toward Intimacy covers mature topics. Listener discretion is advised. Yeah, I think when I first started learning, I felt like, like, should I know some of this already? Like, and I, I think I felt a little bit embarrassed. Like, why don't I know some of this already? And then, and then especially as I became an instructor myself, I realized that like, no, we're just not taught this. And so if you think that there's something that you don't know that you should, I mean, you're right, you should know it, but it's not because you're just ignorant or stupid. It's because no one taught you this. Hey there, welcome to Charting Toward Intimacy, where we're expanding the natural family planning conversation. I'm your host, Ellen Holloway. All right, we are here with Taryn DeLong. Taryn, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. So this is another one of our episodes in our Seasons of NFP Use series. Um, and today we are going to be, um, we're going to be talking about charting as a single woman. Um, but before we get into that, Taryn, can you um, introduce yourself to our listeners? Sure. So I am a cradle Catholic and Catholic my whole life, although I will say it was uh, not until my late twenties that I started really taking my faith seriously as an adult, <laughs> uh, which actually plays a part in my NFP journey. Um, I got married in 2020, and my husband and I had our daughter last year in 2021. So I'm a mom. I stay home with her, and while she's napping, and uh, anytime I get a chance, I write and I edit for Catholic publications. And I also last year got certified to teach FEM. It's a fertility awareness method. And I'm working with a pregnancy center here in Raleigh, where I live, Raleigh, North Carolina, to start offering uh, FEM services, FEM teaching services to their clients. Fabulous. I love that. Um, that is awesome. Okay. So as I mentioned, we, um, we're in this series, we're talking about charting as a single woman, um, as a, as this season. Um, and so we're not necessarily going to use the term NFP in this episode. Um, we're probably going to use fertility awareness a little bit more because, um, natural family planning, as we define it on this podcast is the use of a fertility awareness based method alongside prayer and discernment with your spouse to plan your family. And so if you're charting as a single woman, you're not planning your family. Um, (laughs) so, um, so anyway, this is a, uh, a season of fertility awareness use. Um, and this is a little bit different than the episode that we had right before this. So the episode we had before this was, um, charting in adolescence. And that's specifically when your cycle is starting, when you have some irregularities, when you're young, when, um, and we talked a lot in that episode about talking to your daughter about the, um, the start of her cycling experience and her journey and things like that. This we're talking about, um, charting as a single woman, as you know, a teen adult, young adult, um, just charting before you get married. Um, so, um, Taryn, can you start us off with, uh, telling us a little bit about your experience, um, charting as a single woman? Sure. So I, uh, for most of my twenties was on birth control pill. I had been put on it when I was eight, 18 to, for my uh, long cycle. So I could go months without a period. Uh, when I did get my period, it was extremely heavy, extremely painful. Mm. And so they put me on the birth control pill. And so I took it for, like I said, about 10 years and never really questioned it because I didn't really experience any side effects from it. And the symptoms that I've been put on it for were, you know, they were alleviated. So my life was a lot better actually when I was on the pill than it was before then. So I didn't really question it. And then, uh, like I said, it wasn't until my late twenties that I started, you know, really taking my faith seriously. So I was, you know, going to church and, and things like that, but I hadn't fully accepted all of the church's teachings. I'd always been Mm -hmm. pro-life in the sense of being anti-abortion, but I never really understood the teaching on contraception. And I thought that Uh, when women talked about NFP, they were just kind of, you know, they were the lucky ones who had normal cycles and didn't experience pain. And they didn't really know what they were talking about when it came to women like me. (laughs) So that was my perspective on birth control until I really started getting re-engaged with my faith. I started trying to learn more about it. And I started hearing words like fertility awareness method and NAPRO technology and started kind of hearing about, well, you can use these things to help with these symptoms and to help with irregular cycles. 
And as I learned more about it, I thought, well, okay, so maybe this is an option for me. And at the time I was dating the man who's now my husband, you know, he's a practicing Catholic. So I was like, okay, well, I'm not, I mean, we're not talking about marriage yet, but I mean, I like this guy. So like someday we're maybe we'll be married and we're both (laughs) Catholic. So, you know, this might be something I need to learn more about. Uh, So I went off the pill, went back on the pill because that was not a fun experience and then went off of it again and was totally committed to getting off the pill. So I did some research on the different uh, NFP methods, fertility awareness methods, and I had read that Creighton was kind of tied with NAPRO technology, which was really good for if you have any of these hormonal conditions. So I was like, okay, I'll give this a try. I found an instructor and she worked with me as I was kind of coming off the pill and uh, the things that I had seen before I went on the pill were coming back. So when I first went off of it, I'd optimistically gone like 28 days into my calendar and been like, here's where I'll start. And I was like, maybe I'm an adult now, it'll all be fine. And it was not fine. So um, as I was learning with her and she started seeing, you know, kind of the different um, irregularities in my charts, she referred me to a NAPRO provider. So uh, natural procreative technology. Um, So this doctor was actually like an hour and a half away from where I live. And um, so I was like, okay, well, I guess that's what I have to do. (laughs) So I went there and it was totally worth the drive. I had never experienced a a doctor's appointment like that. She was so thorough. She asked all of these questions, questions that I didn't even think were connected, you know, about my cycles, my symptoms. She found out that I had blood sugar problems, which I had like never even thought could be related to hormones. Place pieces together. She was like, I think you have PCOS. And I was like, okay, so she, uh, she had me do blood work and there's this whole process of getting blood work at certain points in your cycle. And, um, the results indicated to her that I did have PCOS. So, um, so that was kind of exciting because I finally had an answer to what had been going on with my cycle because before I never got a diagnosis, they were just like, here's the pill, abnormal cycles, the end. Mm -hmm. And so it was nice to finally have an answer to what I was experiencing. And then she recommended um, some diet changes, supplements, and it took a while to kind of get adjusted to the diet changes, especially into for my body to kind of get into that rhythm. And then it, I mean, it worked. My cycles were normal lengths. They were, my charts were looking more normal. Uh, but then my painful period, like the pain during my period started coming back. So she was like, okay, I think you might have endometriosis. And I was like, I don't know. Cause I've heard that that's like really bad pain, which I've learned since then is not necessarily true. There's like a whole spectrum mm. of pain levels that you can experience with endometriosis. So um, I was like, I don't know. And she was like, I think, I don't know. I think you might. And then every cycle, the pain was getting worse and worse. And so I ended up making an appointment with her to do um, a uh, laparoscopic surgery, which is the really the only way that you can definitively diagnose endometriosis. And I got lucky in this doctor because she also is trained in excision surgery, which is pretty much the gold standard in getting rid of endometriosis. So she was able to diagnose it and get rid of it in the same surgery. Oh my gosh. How great. Yeah, it was, I was very lucky. I didn't realize how lucky until later when I started learning more about endometriosis. So, I mean, it was life-changing. Yeah. Uh, Anyone who's experienced, you know, uh, endometriosis can tell you that if those symptoms are gone, it's such a big difference. So anyway, so I was healthier than I'd like really been since I hit adolescence. I, my cycles were normal. I, the pain was gone and I just, I felt so healthy and I finally had answers to these questions that I'd had, you know, my whole adult life. Um, and this all happened before I was engaged. Fabulous. <laughs> so it, was like, it was a long process. It pr- from the time I started working with a Creighton practitioner until the time that I had my endometriosis surgery was probably like a year and a half. Uh, so it, w- it took a while for me to get healthy and it was worth the time. It was really scary at the time. because I was like, I don't know what's going to happen to me every month or every mm-hmm. other month or however, however much it is between my period and without the pill. It was terrifying. But once I got through it, I was like, this, I mean, it was just life changing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I love your story that you were able to, you know, start charting years before you got married, 
um, and be able to work with a doctor to diagnose, you know, these two very serious, um, things that can cause cycle irregularities and intense pain, um, among many other things. And, um, and let's just like jump back on the fact that you said you have a daughter, which means that like you, you got the gold standard of healthiness, right? Like (laughs) you were fertile. Yes. Yes. And I had so much angst about whether that would happen. I've always wanted to be a mother and we got married and I was able to get pregnant and it was a healthy pregnancy. She's, she's so healthy and beautiful and amazing. So so wonderful. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I just, yeah. I mean, just a beautiful story that, that it was able to be diagnosed and treated, um, in time, because I, I think those things can cause, um, permanent infertility if they're not treated, um, properly or, or, um, in a reasonable amount of time. So that's just, that's fantastic. I'm so glad. I hope everyone listening to this, if you're not married yet, just go find an instructor right now, go run, run and find an instructor. Um, all right. So what would you say are kind of some of the most difficult aspects of charting, um, as a single woman? I think the biggest one is kind of the first barrier, which is just information and access Mm. to information. Because I mean, I, I was a cradle Catholic. I, you know, went to, I went to mass. I was a member of a Catholic church and I had no idea that NFP or fertility awareness could work for someone like me. I had no idea. And so I think that's the first challenge is before you even get started is just knowing that this exists. And so that's why I'm so passionate about, I mean, I write about this. I like talk about it because I just, I mean, I wish that I had done this sooner and been healthier for more of my twenties, but I'm glad that I did it, you know, so early before I got engaged, because I think doing it during marriage prep is, I mean, it's great, but I think it's got to start sooner than that for, I mean, just for practical family planning purposes, it's good to be solid and confident in your charting skills before you start using it for family planning, but also just for for health reasons. And so I think that's the first challenge is that just access. Yeah, definitely. Oh my gosh. I so agree. Um, oh man, like if we could just introduce and a few, well, fertility awareness, if we could just introduce that in junior high and high school, when these girls are, um, just starting to get into, you know, cycle maturity and, um, And a lot of them are just going straight on the pill because their doctor said so, um, because they had, you know, the natural irregularities of adolescence, um, or they have something going on like very painful periods, um, or, you know, what you, what you experienced, right. So pain, painful periods, as well as, um, you know, just really long periods of time between cycles or cycles, just being very, very long, um, and man, if we could just get this information out more, oh, <laughs> I think it's a generation. It's, it's like a generations long, uh, pattern too. I mean, obviously the science of fertility awareness hasn't been around for too terribly long, but so many of these conditions run in families. And so, you know, you put woman, woman on the pill and she thinks that's the only option. So then her daughter gets put on the pill and she thinks mm-hmm. it's the only option and just, it can carry on. And so I think we have to break that cycle you know, those of us who know, and then have daughters, we can teach our daughters and they can teach their daughters and the science is only going to get better. Right. And hopefully those daughters then can teach their friends and absolutely. Yeah. And it can get better from there and we can only do so much and we can do, we can do what we're called to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, all right. So what, uh, what kind of tips or suggestions do you have for women who are navigating this season of charting as a single woman? Um, I think first of all, if you do, if you are on the pill for, um, you know, for painful periods or long cycles or whatever the symptom is, I think it's the thought of coming off the pill can be really scary. So my tip is to trust in the process and, and try to find some courage. And I, I say that with trepidation because I think there are certain times in my life where I, I don't know if I would have heard that well, but the result is so worth it. And sometimes the journey can be long. Sometimes it can be more difficult than my journey was. And so I also want to acknowledge that, um, you know, not everyone has like a picture perfect fertility 
and health journey. But I think that we're, we're you know, your health is so worth it. It's worth mm-hmm. the hard work and it's worth the time. So that would be my first tip. And another one is, I think, um, I think now is a good time to start learning because COVID sent a lot of people online. And so there's a lot of instruction and telemed, telemedicine and telehealth available right now. And so I know access to uh, teachers and medical care can be difficult, but if you have good internet access, which again, not everyone has, but if you have good internet, you can find someone who can teach you. Right. You know, as an instructor myself, um, prior to COVID, I had never taught an online class and now it's basically all I do. (laughs) It's so much more convenient for me, um, is teaching, you know, via zoom and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, I just feel like that opened up the world of, um, of being able to, to have instructors of any method available to you. Um, and I, you know, I, I recall, um, prior to COVID talking with a friend of mine who, um, who did actually have an instructor who was out of the area. Um, and she, she did instruction via zoom and this was before, you know, zoom was a household name. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, wow, that's so weird. That's, that seems weird. Like you can't actually meet with the person in person, Mm -hmm. but man, no, it's not. It's yep. <laughs> it is a totally viable way to learn fertility awareness. And there's so many great instructors who, um, who have actually like pre-recorded their, um, mm-hmm. sessions. And so you can actually just do it on your own time and then schedule your follow-ups with them, um, uh, according to their schedule and your schedule. And, you know, I love, I love that. It's just making it so much more accessible, which is huge. Yeah. And, and then if you do need, end up needing to go see a doctor, whether it's a NAPRO doctor, a femme provider, or, you know, another kind of restorative uh, reproductive health specialist, a lot of them are doing telehealth now. And I mean, I, like I said, I saw someone initially who was an hour and a half away. And so she would order, give me the orders for my blood work. And I would just go to a lab for in my area. Mm-hmm. And so there's ways to work it out so that you can still see someone who understands how to actually diagnose and treat you, even if you can't find someone in your area. And this is where, I mean, getting, doing this while you're single can help because you don't need a local OB, right? Because presumably you're not getting pregnant. So it, you know, you you have a little bit more flexibility there. You're not worried about like, what if I go into labor and my doctor's three hours away? Yeah, that would be tough. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, as someone who has experienced precipitous labor, it's got really scary. Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. I love that. And, and don't be afraid to, um, you know, if you're in this, uh, period of life, it, ask questions, um, ask questions to instructors, ask questions to doctors. Um, there is no such thing as a dumb question when it comes to fertility awareness. Um, and, and that's because like, it's not implemented into our society as something that we know well as a society. Um, and so, you know, if you feel like, oh my gosh, this is probably such a dumb question, ask it because, you know, either an instructor or a doctor, whatever, you know, whatever that question pertains to, we'll probably be happy to answer it. And we'll probably answer it so much better than Google's going to answer it. (laughs) I think when I first started learning, I felt like, like, should I know some of this already? Like, and I I think I felt a little bit embarrassed. Like, why don't I know some of this already? And then, and then especially as I became an instructor myself, I realized that like, no, we're just not taught this. And so if you think that there's something that you don't know that you should, I mean, you're right. You should know it, but it's not because you're just ignorant or stupid. It's because no one taught you this. And so the instructor you're working with, the doctor you're working with, is so happy to teach you yeah, about your body and the way that it's supposed to work. Exactly. Oh my gosh. I, I mean, honestly, I had never heard of the term cervical crypts before learning, um, NFP. And I like, I was like, shouldn't I know, like, this is a part of my body. Like, shouldn't I have like learned that in, um, you know, biology class or, or when I had sex ed in junior high and it's like, well, no, because they didn't actually teach you sex ed. Let's be honest. (laughs) So don't be embarrassed if, um, you know, you're, you're sitting there in a 
course and they're going over the female reproductive anatomy and you're like, I've never heard some of these words. It's okay. Yeah. Some of us, it's- many, most of us had never heard of, you know, some of these vital organs that we have. Um, you know, we hear, we hear about the uterus, the, the uterus, oh my gosh, the uterus. <laughs> We also hear about the Eucharist, but in a totally different situation. Oh my gosh. (laughs) You know, we hear about the uterus and we hear about the vagina and like maybe the fallopian tubes, but like, I feel like that's kind of it. And there's so much more to what's going on. (laughs) Yeah. And I think, I mean, I think most instructors started at ground zero too. Right. And I think a lot of us, a lot of us are instructors not because we've always been experts in this, but because we also had that moment of like, why, why didn't I already know this? And then became passionate about helping other women who also didn't know. That's exact. I would say, yeah, probably the majority of instructors are like that, that that's my story too. It's like, I was like, how come I didn't know this now? I need to share this with everyone. (laughs) Oh man. Well, Taryn, is there anything else that you would like to share before we close out? I think I really just want to reiterate that um, fertility awareness is not just for family planning and it's so important for single women to learn how to chart. I mean, I think, you know, I think religious sisters and consecrated virgins should chart because you know, not enough women know what their cycle is supposed to look like when it's healthy. Not enough women know if their hormones are healthy and it's, I think we deserve better. And, you know, so the single woman listening who is like, well, I don't need to you know, worry about family planning yet. Just it, do yourself a favor and, and learn how to chart anyway. If you think that your cycles are normal and healthy, that's awesome. Learn to chart anyway, because yeah because it's life changes, things change. And it's important to keep an eye on, on all aspects of your health. And if you're planning on getting married, it's really better to know how to chart before you're dealing with wedding planning and marriage prep and all of the stress that goes into that. Because I mean, first of all, stress can throw off your cycle. And second of all, you just, you want to be solid in knowing how to chart before you're using it for family planning. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Couldn't have said it better myself. Taryn, that was fabulous. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast and sharing your story. Um, I just, I loved it. It was so great. Thank you. It's been great sharing with you. Thanks so much for listening. If you are not already following us on Instagram, be sure to check us out at charting toward intimacy. And as a reminder, this is one of nine episodes in a huge series about uh, the different seasons of using NFP and fertility awareness. Uh, this is episode two of nine. Uh, be sure to check out last week's episode uh, to catch up. And uh, next week, we are going to be talking about charting when you are newly married. It's such a great conversation that I have, and I'm really excited to share it with you guys. Until next time.